Welcome to chapter 9. In this chapter, we're going to be talking about something called the law of sines and the law of cosines. Now, to introduce why we talk about this rule, let's start with a little review. Last chapter, we talked about SOHCAHTOA. But one of the big things we talked about with SOHCAHTOA is that you must have a right triangle or you can't use SOHCAHTOA. And that's a huge limitation. So when we have these triangles right here, I can't solve those because I only have SOHCAHTOA right now and it only works on a right triangle. Well, that's where the law of sines and the law of cosine comes in. Today we're gonna to talk about the law of sines. The law of sines is a law that lets you solve any triangle not just right triangles. So if you circle or highlight or square, whatever you want, that right there, this is our law of signs. You are gonna want to memorize this. This is important. I'm also gonna add parentheses there because they should be there. Anyway, so for the law of signs, to understand the law of sines, one thing we need to know is, let's go back to what we know, this right triangle. You remember last chapter we talked about labeling this triangle with opposite, adjacent, and hypotenuse. And we said if we go across from the right angle, that's always the hypotenuse. Well, that idea of going across to find the one that's linked with it, that's huge this chapter. For example, let's look at this triangle here. If I start here at capital A and go across from capital A, notice that lines up with little a. If I go across from capital B, that goes to little b. And if I go across from capital C, that's little c. That pattern will always stay the same. Things that are across from each other are the same letter. Also, capital letters will always be angles. Lowercase letters will always be sides. So right here, this capital A and lowercase a, we would say are a side and angle that are paired together because they're across from each other. Now that will really help you understand the law of sines because you'll see right here, the capital and lower cases are all paired together. And then we have sign in front because it's the law of signs. So with all that in mind, let's start to look at example number one. I'm gonna start in labeling everything. So here's capital A, my angle. Across from that is little a, my side. Here's capital B, my angle. So across from that, this is gonna be little b. And then here's capital C, my angle, and across from that is little c. Now, one thing that you really need to understand is the question of what do I need to know to use the law of sines? Because on your test, you're gonna have a question that's gonna give you a triangle, something like this. And the question it's gonna ask you is, would you solve this triangle with the law of sines or the law of cosines? And you need to be able to look at that triangle and know which one you should use. So here's the key for law of sines. In order to be able to use the law of sines, you need one complete pair. Now what I mean by that is you need a pair of A's, so big A, little a. You need a pair of B, big B, little b, or a pair of C, little c, big C. And you need to know both of them. So let's look at this triangle. I have big C, I don't know little c. So that is not a complete pair. I have big A, I don't know little a. So that is not a complete pair. I have little b, I don't know big B. So here's our first problem. I don't have one complete pair of anything here. However, I can find 
big B. So step one is going to be solve for big B. Because once I find this, then I have a complete pair. Now, how we're going to solve for this is using something hopefully you remember from math a couple years ago. And it's that all, we're going to write this down because it's so important. All angles in a triangle add up to 180 degrees. And that is always true. Uh, all angles in a triangle will always add up to 180. So if I want to find this one, I can do 180, the whole thing, minus the two that I have. And then whatever's left has to be B. So that's my first step. B is going to be 180 minus the two that I've got. So I put that into my calculator and you should get 40. So that is our first answer, that this is 40. And now you can see we now have one complete pair. I have big B and little b. So that means now that I have one complete pair, now I can do law of sines. So to do law of sines, we're going to have a fraction equals a fraction. And these fractions will be paired, A's or B's or C's or A's, something like that. So what we're going to do first on the left hand side is going to be what we're solving for. So in this case, I could solve for little a or little c next, either one, because I know the other pairing. So let me show you what I mean by that. Let's do little a first. So if I want to solve for little a, then that means I'm going to use the law of sines that use the a's first because that's the pair I'm solving for. This pair is going to be the one that you know. So I know the B's. So let's plug in what we know. I know that capital A is 118 degrees, and I know that little a, oh, I don't know little a, so that one's going to stay there. I know that capital B is 40 degrees, and I know that little b is 24. So now I've got this. I need to solve this. We're going to use a little trick called cross multiplication. How this trick works is I'm going to multiply this one and then go across and multiply it to that one. So 24, I put the number first sine of 118. So that's multiplying across the orange arrow. And then I can say equals, and then I can multiply across the purple arrow. So a times sine of 40. Multiply across. That's the purple arrow. That's called cross multiplication. And it makes things way easier because it took it from fractions to no fractions. And now I need to look at this equation, and I need to solve this for A. Well, if I need to solve for A, that means I need to get rid of this. Well, I get rid of it by doing the opposite. So if it's multiplying, I'm going to divide to get rid of it. And then it goes away. But if I divide one side, I have to divide the other. So I get that little a is going to equal 24 sine of 118 divided by sine of 40. And now this is what you'll put into your calculator. So I'm going to open up my calculator here. 24, and then I need to do sine, so S-I-N, my sin button, of 118 divided by sine of 40. Now, 
I'm not going to hit enter yet because right now, even though I type that in correctly, my calculator might actually give me the wrong answer. And here's why. If I come back to my notes here, this angle is in degrees, not radians. That makes a difference in your calculator. So what you want to do is come to your calculator and you're going to hit mode right here. Now notice on this third line it says radian and degree. Since our angles are in degrees, I need to make sure degree is highlighted. So if your calculator looks like this with radian highlighted and you try to type in that um, equation, it will give you the wrong answer. So if you're in radians, your whole test is going to be wrong because we need to be in degrees. So I would get used to double checking, going down here, go over to degree and hit enter, and double checking that we are in degrees, because if you're in radians, you will get the wrong answer. Now, I want to go back to the main home screen, so I'm going to hit second, and then mode, and that will quit back to this home screen. Now that I know that I'm in degrees, I can hit enter, and that's my answer. Now, for this chapter, I want you to do everything to three decimals. Because when we get to the law of cosines, if you round to one or two decimals, your end answer can end up being like 20 whole numbers apart because you rounded differently. So we're just going to all do the same thing. This chapter, I want everyone to round to three decimals. So 32.966. And that's our answer. Okay, let's try our last step because now we need to solve for little c. I'm going to set this up and then I want you to try to solve this on your own. So remember, our first pair is what I'm solving for. So sine of big C over little c. My second pair is the one I know. Now, technically at this point, I know little a and big A. But because I rounded little a, it's not the most accurate answer. So I would still always stick with the complete set given from the very first. So still stick with b's. So sine of big B over little b. Okay, now that you have that set up, I want you to pause the video, try plugging everything in, and then try solving it using it the same exact steps that we did right here for number two. Ready, set, go. Welcome back. Let's see how you did. So here's my big C, my big B, and my little b. I do not know little c, so I leave that one there. Start by cross multiplying. So I get 24 sine of 22 equals C sine of 40. And then, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> hmm, excuse me. I divide by sine of 40 so I can get C by itself. Do it to both sides. So I get C equals 24 sine of 22 over sine of 40, which you're going to type into your calculator. Make sure you're in degree mode, and that should give you this for your final answer. If you got this but not this, I would double check parentheses in your calculator. That can be really important. Okay, in the next video, we're going to do another example of law of signs, but this one we're going to end up solving our problem a little differently than what we just did.